All right, all right, all right. Welcome to a very special edition of the Linux command line video series. In this video, we will look at the control keys for the command line. The Linux command line is very powerful, and there are lots of hidden features that you will discover the more you use it. One of those special things you will discover are keys used in conjunction with the control key that make them special shortcuts. Instead of going over them alphabetically, I'm going to group them according to function, which makes more sense from a teaching and learning standpoint. The first group is the cursor movement group. Let's use this command line as an example. Kale dash N A B space two space slash Etsy slash pass D W which is obviously a typo, but we did that on purpose. We will start with control A, which moves the cursor to the beginning of the line. Control E will move the cursor to the end of the line. Control B will move the cursor back one character. Control F will move the cursor forward one character. Control H will backspace and delete the character to the left of the cursor. Control D will delete the character that the cursor is on if there is anything to delete. Otherwise, it will terminate the shell. We're going to go ahead and do a control E to get back to the end of the command line. And now we're going to do control T, which will swap the last two characters before the cursor. So now this command is correct and we can hit enter. The next group is what I call data entry keys. Let's set up for the command by typing tail dash two of slash var slash log slash sys. And we're going to stop here and then hit control I. Control I is the same as a tab key. And in this case, it will do a tab completion. Once we have the complete file path, we can hit control J which is the same thing as hitting the return key, which will execute the command. Let's set up for the next command. I'm going to do tail dash two of slash Etsy slash hosts. And now I'm going to hit control O. Control O will execute the current command and then put the command back on the command line without executing it again. So you can continue to type and complete that command line. So we see here that we are going to add dot allow, and then I'm going to hit control O again, which will bring back the command line. And this time I'm going to add dot deny and hit control M. Control M is the same thing as hitting the return key. To set up for the next command, we will start typing this line. Where you see those weird characters, caret, capital M, I'm actually not typing caret and capital M. I'm typing control V, control M. What control V will allow is the verbatim insert, or otherwise known as escaping a character. So let's take a look at the results with less. And you see that it's exactly what we typed in. Now let's take a look at the results with more. This only show part of the line. The rest of the line is not seen. And now let's run it with VI. And VI will show us exactly what we typed in. Let's look at the file with the tail command. This will show only the second half of the data. So we see that more and less and vi and tail all give us a different view of the contents of this file. Even though in the previous video, I told you that they should all be the same thing. But the takeaway here is that the control M character in the file is interpreted as a new line. So the way to enter that character into a file is using control V, control M. 
where control V is going to escape the control M. The next group is command history. Control P is just like the up arrow. It will display the previous command. Control N is like the down arrow. It will display the next command. Control R will search through the previous commands when you give it a string to search for. So in this example, I'm going to type echo space dash n, and you can see the previous echo space dash n command pop up. Once you got to the command you are interested in, you can hit control E, and it will put that command on the command line with the cursor at the end, so you can add more to that command. You can also type control A once you have found the command that you are interested in, and it will put that command onto the command line with the cursor at the beginning of the line. And after you've done the control R to do searching, if you don't like what you see, you can hit control C, control G, or escape. Any of those will abort the history search mode. This next group is what I call process control. Let's do cat redirect the output into slash temp slash demo. What this command is doing is that it's waiting for input. And as we type, that input is redirected into the file slash temp slash demo. When we are done, we can hit the control D to send the end of file command to close that program. Let's go ahead and do tail space dash F of slash var slash log slash syslog. What this is going to do is that it is going to be monitoring the last few lines of this file. So if there's anything new that gets added to it, it will get displayed on our screen. What we're going to do is hit control Z to halt this running job. So basically, that job is not dead, it's just on pause. And you can basically unpause it by typing FG for foreground, and it will continue. And when you're done, you can hit Control C, and that will kill a running process. The next group is what I call screen control. Let's go ahead and do a XXD on slash dev slash SDA. So this gave me an error because uh, permission denied. And so this is the perfect opportunity to use what we just learned. We're going to hit Control P to do the previous command, Control A to go to the very beginning of the line, and then add the word sudo, S-U-D-O. Now if we go ahead and hit Enter, a ton of stuff is going to scroll across the screen. We can hit Control S to freeze the display. And when we are done, Reading what's on the screen, we can hit Control Q to unfreeze the screen. And as before, when we're done done, we can hit Control C to kill the process. And lastly, to clear off the screen, we can use Control L. The next group is the deletion group. Let's go ahead and do a Control P to get the last command on the command line. If you do a control U, it will delete the text before the cursor and put it into the paste buffer. Control Y will paste the data from the paste buffer. So let's set up for the next demo by typing LN of slash temp slash password space slash Etsy slash password. If we hit control W, it will delete the last word and put it into the paste buffer. So in this case, the last word is Etsy password. And we're going to go ahead and use the arrow keys to put it after the LN. We're going to hit Control Y to paste the deleted text from the paste buffer. A Control K will delete part of the line after the cursor and put it into the paste buffer. And once again, we can use the arrow key to move it around, and then control Y to paste it from the paste buffer. Now for something completely different. Control G will invoke what's called the system bell. The system will make a tone which can be used for volume checks. 
or you can program your system to flash the screen if you don't want the system to make sounds or if you're hearing impaired. And lastly, the oddball. Control X, which doesn't do anything by itself, but will do something when paired with a second character. So if you do Control X, Control E, it will edit the current command in the line editor defined in the dollar editor environment variable. For Kane 12, the default is the nano editor. Control X, Control V will display the current version of Bash. Control X, Control Asterisk will expand a wildcard character that's already in the command line. So let's take a look at this example. If we do ls of slash etsy slash host asterisk and we hit control x asterisk, it's going to expand the wildcard of everything on the command line. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video where we learned about keyboard shortcuts using control characters. Hope you enjoyed it, and if so, please click on the thumbs up icon to like this video. Please hit the subscribe button to get notified when the next video comes out. Also, please leave me messages in the comment section below so I know what you liked and didn't like, or what you may want to see in future videos. See you next time.